God has done with him. That's Acts 15, 57. 15, chapter, verse 1. Chapter 15. So they was in a, a situation. Now, first of all, the status quo was upset because these disciples of Jesus was teaching about conversion to being saved. And they was upset because they felt like they were uneducated, unlearned, untrained men. They had no right to interfere in their doctrine, in their dogma. But here is these men, supposedly unlearned men, ignorant men, but the prophets had passed off the scene, and then it was time that the priest was in charge. So they felt like they were uh, the priest. They had the power to do as they wanted to do. And they had their own structure. They had their own law. They had their own way of doing things. And Jesus came to upset the status quo. He upset the aura of things. And they didn't like that. They liked things just like they were. And most, you'll find out a lot of people don't like change. Right. They like things the way they are. Yes. But change is good. Amen. But a lot of times we do things wrong so long we make it right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Just like here, they were upset because this man was not circumcised as they had been circumcised. Mm -hmm. Why should he receive the Holy Ghost? Or why should he be special? And why he is not going according to the law of Moses. They were upset about this thing. When folk get upset with you because of the way you live, and you live, then they get upset with you when you're sin, but they got upset with you when you go to church. Amen? Somebody said, me, uh, this, uh, I'm a Baptist, and you should be joining the Baptist church. I'm a Methodist. It ain't but one God. You can label yourself whatever you want. He's not going to ask you when you come to the judgment who I want you for the nomination of what religion. He's going to know one question. Are you saved? Amen. Have you seen me according to the word of God? He said you don't accept them and none of them. You have to accept them in water baptism. You have to accept them and receive the power of the Holy Ghost. And people get upset about that just like here. Yeah, when you get upset with the word. Folk get upset with the word because they look at it differently than you. But the Bible says, remember when he wrote the Bible, he didn't change it. Men change, but God never changed. He's the same. Yesterday and today and forevermore. Don't get tired of and hung up in doctrine. You get hung up and tired of what the word of God is saying. That's what we got to go about. We got to go about the word. Paul said, if I ain't preaching the other gospel, let me curse. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. So we have to be a student. A disciple was a student of the word. They were learning. The Bible says some were learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learn. The Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, they were never learning. But they didn't want to accept the fact that Jesus had came. They don't want to accept the fact that he was not a part of them. Because folks feel if you're not a part of them, they'll cast you aside. But we are all born of God and saved. And you receive him in your life as your Lord and Savior. I'm not big on titles. I'm not big on labels. I'm big on the word of God. Yes. Because you don't belong to my church, you're going to hell. No, that don't make you go to heaven because you belong to my church. Yes. Yes. 
Never go to heaven because of the church. What would you go to heaven when you commit your life totally to him? All right, amen. It's got to be surrender. Yes, he left a message. Yes, he left a way of salvation. Yet still, you can still follow the road of salvation and have hot hate in your heart, malice in your heart, and you miss out of God. See, selfishness is a dangerous thing, friends. Being selfish and thinking the only one guy going on. You're the only one going to heaven. And, and, and that's a term folks thought for many years. Folks thought they had it going on and everybody else going to hell. My two and no more. My few and no more. We don't, we don't want to go to heaven. God got many going to heaven. Amen. Yes, he does. It comes from pride. Pride is setting up the honor of self above the honor of God. Pride is setting up the honor of self above God. Honor of God. It is self-worship and refuse to recognize any righteousness but self-righteousness. It's either my way of no way. Folks rebuke people because they're not baptized in Jesus' name. People are rebuked because you're not baptized in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You belong to a cult because you're in Jesus' name. Or you belong, you're not saved because you're Methodist or Baptist. That don't have anything to do with your label. It's got to do with your salvation. It's got to do with what God's Word says.
them up, they, they were gentlemen here. They were gentlemen, these folk, they didn't want to hear nothing they had to say. They even wanted the disciples along the way to upset everything they went to do. When they were having a prayer meeting, or they had something going on, they were about dis to dis disrupt their meeting. Come in and start a problem. Stand in the back, shout things, and do things, try to upset the speaker. The, anything to stop people from hearing the truth, they did. Even to the point they stole Paul because of his preaching. Trying to stop him from spreading the gospel. Even Paul was laying there dying. God brought his spirit back to his body. Because God was not finished with Paul. God had no work for Paul to do. When you have work and God has work to do, the devil can't kill you. He can't stop you. But self-righteous folks, they are already destroyed. Because nothing can penetrate their heart. That stony heart. That is hardened. You don't have people like that saying, I don't hear what you're saying. You can say, praise the Lord. How you doing? That's not the right way to do it. You say, praise the Lord, saying, we don't say praise the Lord back to you. We say hallelujah. Well, let's see what y'all do. We don't do that. We can say hallelujah when we want to. We say praise the Lord. You say praise the Lord. We do what we want to. We're not coming in. That's the way we do it. And we saw right now. That's just like, that's what we do. Is there anything wrong with that saying? You say praise the Lord back to me. What's wrong with that? See, everybody want to have their own opinions. But God is the final say. Whatever God says is right. Why well, people can't understand that, son? I tell you why they can't understand that. Because they don't have the Holy Ghost. These are these were comfort and lead you guys off. People accept the word they say, but they never accept the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the thing in your life that calls you to look at yourself. You can't have the Holy Ghost and not see yourself. The Holy Ghost will expose you. It will show you who you are. Amen. Things you used to do, you can't do it anymore. Because the Holy Ghost won't let you do it anymore. You don't have the desire anymore. Even thoughts can be a mind. The Holy Ghost lifts up a standard against that enemy. That's true. Covenants. The opposite of covenants is love. With a part of it. The very high example of this love is he on whom justified faith is fixed. If any anyone, well, God's a, already fixed thing in your life, but when the power of God comes in your life, it changes, it, it humbles you, it calls you to, to, to be convicted of the thing you said and done. It convicts you when you speak the wrong thing. You say, well, let me say something wrong. Because your heart is convicted. No, you didn't say anything wrong. But you feel the power of God. And what God is doing, the, the, the light is coming on. And your spirit says, oh, oh, be cautious. Watch what you say. You didn't hurt anybody. God said, because when you be cautious, that spirit says, be cautious. Be careful how you say it. Yeah. I know you didn't mean it. But it's the way it came out. And then when you, when, you, when you understand what God is doing, that light comes on. Oh, God, okay, be cautious. You go to, you go to a, a, a caution light, as long as there's nothing else coming. Caution and be careful. Don't be slow. Watch, uh, watch what's coming. We got to watch as well as pray, the Bible says. Amen. You got to be cautious, saying, the way you treat one another, even in the house of God. It's hard for some folks to be nice. Yeah. They're just not nice people. That's true. They struggle to smile. They struggle to be kind. They struggle all. Oh, they just don't have them. But when the Holy Ghost comes, how can you not have God in your, have God in your life? You, you can't change. Something wrong with you. Amen. Folks, I die daily. I modify the deeds of the flesh. I know we can man. Every time I would do, would do good, he was always present. But I'm working on myself. I got day. I'm working on modifying the deeds of the flesh. I'm trying to get over this thing. Because this thing is destroying me. You see the people just not like self result. But you should have faith. 
draw your eyes from the desires of what you want and think about what others need and what others want. You know, I was telling, I was talking to my wife, I said, you know, it's amazing me how God works. I'm worried about being in church all, and I got a woman. <laughs> See, like I'd be more to feed my house all first, then help me in church all. That's how natural mind thinks. Yeah, right. Me first. That's right. Anything else is secondary. But my heart and my mind was pushing me to get the church done. I'm not worried about the house. The house will be here when I'm dead gone. So we should be concentrated on the thing that's going to bless folks, not just ourselves. Self indulgence. It's all about me. It's all about what I want. It's all about they thought these men were completely gone. They thought they were the worst folks in the world because they had not been trained as a Pharisee or a scribe, they, had not, they don't have no knowledge of, a, of the training or the teaching. They're just ignorant men. That's the Bible says, right? Amen. They were ignorant men. But they didn't understand who Jesus was. He was a great teacher. He was the greatest scholar ever lived. He was the Word. The Word. He was the word. And the world, the word dwelt among us. He was everything. I don't care how much learning you get. If you don't get Jesus, your learning is in vain. That's all right. Read Paul was so powerful. He had the letter of the law. He was trained as a Pharisee. He was in the Sanhedrin court. He was a Hebrew of Hebrew. He was well versed in all of the law and tradition of his custom. Well, first, but he met a man called Jesus. Yeah. He met a man that knew everything. He met a man that could speak to the wind. Paul could speak to the wind and it would see. He met a man that could go blind and eye. Paul, in case you didn't know my eyes, he didn't have a mouth of that. Paul and Jesus had the power to see a man who lay for 38 years. Pick up the bed and walk. Paul couldn't do it. His learning couldn't do it. But his God could do it. Yeah. His God had all power. And you know what made me what made Paul was so powerful? When he got converted, he could talk to the elite. He could talk to the learned. Why? Because he knew the letter. But yet still, he had Jesus. It was good for him because he could go and, and those people of high esteem, he could talk that language. He could call them up. When they tried to trap him, he, they couldn't trap him because he knew everything they knew. He learned the letter. But he wasn't so powerful about it. He had the letter and he had the power of God in his life. He had the Holy Ghost. You take a man with the education and the Holy Ghost or a woman, they're powerful. Amen. Because they know how to operate in this society. They know how to convert and make and bring things into the, in that vein. They know how to take religion and mix it with education and make it work. How, the world can't do that. They can't do both. They can't be a Christian. They think they either ac academia, academia, or they, they don't. They, most academia are not saved. They believe in science. Doctors, very few doctors are saved. Very few lawyers are saved because they deal with law. They don't deal with, they don't deal with a spiritual. They deal with the natural. But the preacher man deals with the spirit. And when you got both, you can be powerful. But he was letting all much learning. The people said, much learning I made you mad. Why did he say that? To, because Paul was learned. He knew he was learned man. But one thing he didn't understand, how did this Pharisee, the Pharisee, now he following the one called Jesus. What happened to him? He must be mad. You can have everything you want if you just stay where you are. Don't go to church. Don't be, you are. You got it. You got this going on. You got that. You don't need God. You got everything. And 
That's what the world was thinking. They think they got, I got everything. I don't need God. But they don't realize the one that you can be called in. One of the richest men in the world. Steve Jobs had all the money. Anything he wanted. But he couldn't stay in here. I'm sure he gave it all up to stay on the lawn. The young man died early. No medicine. He can go anywhere in the world for medicine and treatment, but not to keep him busy. Saints, if you want to see Jesus, you better get him. Don't be so much self indulged in this old world that you can't see who you need. You need Jesus. I see people running around trying to make a dollar. You talk to a man, he, he works seven days a week, 12 hours a day, and every question you ask him, I, I don't have time, I, I'm working. And then you go to a Christian, when do you have time to go to church? Then you work seven days a week, 12 hours a day. See, you trapped yourself. You're going to give all your time to your job and no time to God. But you're going to be good. You think you don't need the church. Face what you're saying. I got enough God. I don't need the church right now. You need the church. You need God in your life. That's why so many people fail. They think they've got so high in God they don't need the church anymore. You always need the church. You always need what God has for you. We're there with Paul and Ron was at no small decision in three months with them. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others should go to Jerusalem and to the apostles and elders about this question. So Paul could have, he didn't trust his academia, he didn't trust his learning, he wanted to go to the preachers. I want to speak to the religious leader. Find out what I need to do. Yes, I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm correct, but I want to make sure. I'm going to somebody that can help me. See, a lot of times we, we think we got it going on. We don't seek counseling like these brothers. These brothers went to seek counseling of what they should do. He went to the apostles and the elders. The divine, the elder here don't mean preachers. Most seasoned brother. That's what that means. The most seasoned brother. Apostle and the seasoned brother to find out what we need to do. The last person that we talk to is the pastor. Last person. And then we are at an a, a, a end. We have a place. That we can't go any farther. Then we seek help. But these men did not take a chance because they were dealing with souls. They don't want to take a chance. They were dealing with somebody's life, hell or heaven. They want to make sure they got this thing right. You should be concerned about your salvation. You should not take your salvation lightly. You should just join the church because. And if you have a good time, you should just join the church because the music sounds good or the choir. You should join the church because the preaching is good. You should join the church because you want to miss hell. Amen. Amen. That should be your concern. I don't want to go to hell. Yes. Folks join churches for different reasons political reasons, social reasons, economic reasons, or whatever. That's not the reason to join a church. Join the church because I need God. I tried it my way and it didn't work. Yes. I've been a failure. I got success, I got money, but yet my life is in shambles. My home is messed up. See, folks think what they you can give the way, give your wife diamonds and furs. That's not going to make her happy. Well, I, I buy everything, that, that's not going to make her happy. What's going to make someone happy is because you love them. 
not because of what you've given them, it's what you, you you spiritually. That's where marriage is. Marriage is a spiritual connection. And that spiritual connection called you to just want to be with her or her just be with you. But if that spiritual connection is broke, is broken, then you have nothing together. Only to hold together that spiritual connection. That's why the Bible says we are equally yoked together. Amen? Because nothing should break that spiritual bond between a husband and a wife. That's why it's so important, ladies and men, to make sure you marry somebody that, that, that is of the same belief, faith, salvation, whatever that you are. You, you need to marry somebody that's able to do, able to, uh, and not save or if, and, and, and whatever they are, you you don't mess up because it, that, that spirit is it, it's not a connection. Yeah, yeah. My husband, he got a whole guy. I got a whole guy. We have some problems. Tell me who don't have problems. Same folks have problems too. They will fall out for another room too. Yeah. True. That's the reality. When you mix people together, they got different personalities, different things going on yes. in here, yes. you're going to have a mess going on. But you got a God in you to bring it together. Amen? Amen. Some folks marry because of kids. They marry because of financial. And they stay in there. They hate each other. But they stay in the same house. Amen? But let me tell you something, Saint. That's a miserable house. Amen. It's a miserable house with no love in it. It's a miserable relationship. And who's it for? The devil. It's not her, it's not him. It's the devil has got in your relationship and called you to pull your apart. But when you love God, no matter how bad it gets, no how bad it gets, you fall on your knees and God help me through this circumstance. Help me. Don't let me be so self-righteous that I can't come down. And that's what happened in those cases. We got so much uh, un unforgiveness in us. We got so much self-hatred. We got so much self-righteousness. We can't give in our inch. We rather die than give in a little bit. You don't have to take that. Amen. He's still in the fire. 
Look at you. He over there with his fat self. He don't want to. Hey, hey, hey. Look at him. Look at him. Good hanging out. The devil stoking the party. He's looking at her, looking at her ball head self. Wig wearing thing. See, the devil stoking the party. Talking about it. Then, 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 what are you doing? It's an explosion. Y'all think it's funny, but it's real. It ain't funny, it's real. That's the way the enemy comes in. For controversy and, and, and self destruction and, 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 and try to bring you down, make you feel worthless. That's why marriage don't work, because one or the other trying to make the other feel not worthy to be married to them. Y'all be glad I'm married. I could have got somebody better than you. I, the, the girl I'm going, she could have a whole lot better than you. She's a stoke in the fight. The enemy's always stoking the fight. Y'all can laugh, but it ain't funny. That's where the Paul said the enemy was stoking the fight to the point they went to see the preachers to get this mouth straightened out. When they got the ass, they went back. They had confidence. But most folk in the divorce court because they won't come and talk to the preacher. Amen. Because they ain't thinking so bad. They didn't want to talk, but sometimes they just got so bad. The drugs you can do. All they can do is just go on and do your do. But you have to realize the enemy is so in the fight. Even before you get to that point, deal your knees and say, God, help me. My, I'm not thinking right now. I'm not blaming nobody but me. Me and my wife have had some tough times. We've been through some storms. It's 40, about 40 years. We've been through a whole lot of storms. Yeah. But we learned to ride the storm. And how you, how you keep the devil from talking, just shut up and pray. God, help my mouth. Help my mind. Help me to think right. Help me to, you know, we get to play. We say, but we get some bad thoughts. So y'all know y'all have said something bad about your husband. Oh, yeah, you may have said some bad, mean things. Not, not behind the back, but right, right in front of our face. Here's the thing that's not right. That's why we need the preacher. These men had to come to the preacher to get it straightened out. Don't wait to get so bad and then come to the preacher. Because most times when folks come to the preacher, it's already over. We talked to a couple, and they'd already been in their mind they were going to live together. They'd already decided. We showed them a film about marriage and everything else, but they had no, they was done. They were going to know that they were not a member of the church. The folks out there got moved in right there. The devil is alive. The devil is alive. He went nobody in the building. They, were, they, 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 they didn't belong to our church. They were dangerous. That's all right. But they, they end up. Believing and marrying someone else. But the enemy will get you to the point, sir. Well, I, I don't mind know my business. You don't know your business anyway, you go to court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Saints, we try so hard to let the saints know you got an advocate. You got a heavenly father. He knows how to fight for you. He knows how to protect you. You can't protect yourself. You can have guns and talk and admit you can feel it and feel it But if somebody wants to take you out, they can take you out. Ain't nothing gonna protect you from the devil but God. Come on, give God praise. Nothing but God. The only thing can shield you from the enemy is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Don't be so proud. Self-indulge, self-righteous, that you can't come to the woman man of God. And you have to tell her what you're going through. All you have to do is pastor, pray for me. I'm in the 
another story.
he knew. God showed him who he was. I'm still God. I'm God is in the sand, and the ashes, in the dust. I'm the same God. When the, the, the skin burn is destroying your body, I'm the same God. But one thing about it, at the end of the day, when the devil gets through this mess, I'm going to bring your skin back like it never had a star. I'm going to bring your money back like it never been broke. I'm going to bring your money back like it never lost it. I'm going to bring your child back like it never lost it. I'm going to bring everything back twofold. It's better than you ever had. Let me tell you something, say to God. God don't have
God put stuff here for the saints not to deal with. Why did that thing happen? Because he protecting you. He's protecting you. He said, well, you know, I'm so glad I didn't marry that guy because he was a wife beater. He stayed in jail. If I had married him, I would have been one of those victims. So you are a shout, praise God, you need to get that joy. Amen? And maybe you should shout because you didn't get that wrong with the street ball. That made by 20 different men. You ought to be thankful. But she looked good, yeah. But what are you bringing home to your wife and your children? What are you bringing home to your, your husband? What you bring home? You know what you laid up with? You know what you got? Amen. You got to think, say. You don't know what. That's how men get trapped. Because, because she was pretty. And then he's dying with AIDS. Yeah. The devil got a setup for you. Yeah. I use this, I use that. No, you better take caution. The light is on. See, I tell you, I don't care how old the preacher is, how ugly he is, someone will going to mess with him. He can be ugly as ugly. He can be big as his room, or skinny as his wife. Just because the preacher, the devil should bring him down. That's true. Amen. Just bring him down. I don't care. Bring him down. He's fighting against me. He's preaching against me. Bring him down. And you got folks spreading in the church to try to bring the preacher down because they don't like it. And false accusers. Amen. They think it's not true. Amen. Just to bring him down. But it's a dangerous thing when you mess with God's anointing. Yes. I just want to let the man on it. All the children of God are God's anointing. Every one of us in this building is God's anointing. We are saved. We got the same Holy Ghost. It ain't no different Holy Ghost, it's one Holy Spirit. But let's not think evil. You why this can't deal with that person. You need to pray. God give me more grace. Amen. Why would I give me more grace? Please help me, Lord. I'm not thinking right. Help my mind. I go to people that don't like to say, I go to a therapist. I go to sit and talk. They have professional training. Most of you do it, they can talk for about 10, 15 minutes. And then we have a session on. But you, it's, it's called it's purging yourself. And they're trained in that area. Because a lot of stuff that way back years ago happened. And you got to talk it out. You can't talk to somebody that's been trained. I think it's a good thing when the saint can get help. Because you, you need help. If you can't get it here, go somewhere and get help. Amen? I'm serious. If you can't, if you don't have enough faith to believe God can do it, get some help. Don't walk around all your life angry and upset. About what somebody said or what somebody did. And they've been dead 30 years. You still have to fight and fuss what they did. You can call me whatever you want to call me. That don't make it what it is. Amen. You can call me a cat. Yes. I, I'm not a cat. Man. You can call me a dog. I'm not a dog. You can call me whatever. That, that don't make me beat it. Right? Right. Yes. So, saints of God, God knows He's right. Then he's speaking right now to someone. Let us all stand. Somebody said, Yeah, I'm glad he get through. I heard that. That's all right. But I tell you one thing, you're gonna need it. You're gonna need it. You're gonna need it, saints. You're gonna need it. You're gonna need it. You're going to need it, saints, before you leave this earth. You're going to need God's move upon your life. You have anyone that is in the city.
I'm coming up. I'm not going to tell the preacher anything. I'm going to just pray for you. Let us come. Preachers come in time.